Hey guys, so in this tutorial we're going to add guns to our uh, spacecraft. So to start we're going to go to our first person BP folder, blueprints, and we're going to copy this first person projectile, expand the blueprints folder, and drag it to the weapons folder, and copy here. Actually, we're going to do move here, and then we're going to right click, and dra uh, sorry, right click, and duplicate, and rename this, <coughs> um, ship projectile. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder and we're going to name this materials and in that folder right click create a new material name this material matte bullet material go inside now hold three and click. This will create a vector, which will let us, uh, in this case, choose the RGB colors. So we want yellow, so we're gonna do four, four and four for the R and the G, and connect that to emissive color. Apply and save. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna make a bright color, a bright yellow that emits light, which will look cool for bullets. Now go back to our blueprints, our weapons, and go to ship projectile. Go to the viewport and click our, uh, our sphere here. And for the materials section, select it. Under browse, type in bullet materials, select that. And as you can see, it gives it a nice little glow. We'll save that, close that. Now go into our ships folder, select our ship. And we're gonna need to add an arrow of where the bullets will come out. So add a component, add an arrow, drag that forward a bit, and I'll drag it up just so it's visible. And we'll name this fire arrow. Actually, we're gonna name that fire arrow one. We're gonna spawn bullets from two sections so it looks better. So we'll move that over to a negative 130, and then right click it and duplicate. And then drag that over to about 130, should be good. It's a little wide, but just so we can see what we're doing. And we'll name this one Fire Arrow 2. Compile and save that. Now go into the event graph. And we're going to right click and type Fire. And then get the action event. This already exists for the uh, first person guy, so we'll use the same button. Now, when that's fired, we want to do a uh, first we want to do a branch, so hold B and click, connect that, drag off this and do promote to variable and name this new variable can fire. So we have a bool which is a true or false and uh, by default it'll be true. So if we can fire, we want to set can fire to false. This way we can't fire over and over and over just by holding it infinitely. And then we're going to spawn, actually no, we're going to do a flip-flop. Flip-flop, the first time it executes, it'll go A, and then it'll go B, and then it'll go A. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire a bullet from the first arrow, and then the second arrow, and then the first arrow, and so on. So off A, do spawn actor from class. And for the class, select our, uh, what did I name it again? Ship projectile. And for the transform, get the fire arrow one, and we'll drag fire arrow two in here while we're at it. <clears throat> Off that, do get transform, get world transform, sorry. We'll connect that to the transform. And control C that, control V, connect that to B. And do uh, control C, control V, get the world transform of fire arrow two, like that. Spawn that. And then we're gonna do a delay. We'll connect both spawn projectiles to the delay. We'll drag off the duration and we'll do promote to variable and we'll name this fire delay. Compile so that we can edit the value. Save. 0.2% is good. That means we'll be firing five bullets a second. Bullet every 0.2 seconds. And when that's completed, <clears throat> we want to set can fire and we want to set that to true so we can fire after the delay. So now let's go see if this works.
Yep, as you can see, every time we hit the fire button, it spawns a big projectile. So let's fix that projectile a bit. Let's make it so it's not so fat. <clears throat> the first way we're going to do that is we're going to drag off fire01 to get world location. And we're going to do make transform. We'll do that instead of getting the world transform. Because the problem right now is it's getting the transform of the arrows, which is big. The transform being the scale, rotation, and location. We just want the location of those. So the scale of 1.1.1 is good. That means the bullet will be the size that it is. So we'll delete this get world transform. Rotation is fine. Actually, no, it's not fine. We need to drag off the arrow, get world rotation, and uh, set that, and then connect that. So now we'll control C, delete this, control V, connect this, connect this, now another problem is the bullets were slow and they were going down. So let's go to our weapons. Let's go to ship projectiles. First thing we'll fix is the speed. We do that by going to the class, or sorry, we select the projectile movement component on the left. Select this where it says projectile. And then go to velocity and we'll set that to 10,000. That should be good. And then select that again and we want to disable gravity. So we'll set initial gravity scale here to zero. If you have trouble finding these, you can use the search here, like gravity or velocity. Compile, save, close that. Let's go test it out. And it looks like we can shoot now. <clears throat> Now it doesn't actually do anything when it shoots, the bullets bounce off, but in the next video we'll add destruction to these asteroids so we can blow up asteroids. And I notice the speed is also still a bit slow, so we might, it might have changed how that works. So let's go back to our projectile movement component, and we have initial speed here, so we'll set that to 10,000. We'll set the max speed to 10,000. Compile, save, close that, save, play. And now they're moving fast. It's much better. Another problem is, is we don't necessarily want to click to shoot. We want it to be shooting every time we're holding the button. So a way we can do this is by going to our ship, going here. <clears throat> and we'll set that so when we press the fire button, we open a gate. So we'll do gate. When we release it, we want to, sorry, we want the pressed to open the gate. We want the release to close the gate. We want it to start closed, and we want this to fire every tick. So let's get a tick. Oh, we already have a tick. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag all of this over to the tick. We'll connect the tick into here. And now, if this works properly, <clears throat> it should fire just by holding the button. Yep. All right, that was the tutorial on guns that fire, and uh, I hope you'll join me next time for adding destructible asteroids and then missiles that can target the asteroids. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.